It's been a long time since I sat on anything but horseback cushions and designated seats, Krishna. I had forgotten the touch of the grass itself. <laughs> Seems to me that it's been quite a while since you did a lot of things, Karna. How are you, my friend? How am I? I am flabbergasted. The war is coming with every passing moment. And now that Duryodhan has refused your peace offer, what else remains but to count the days? <laughs> you think a lot about the future, Angaraj. We all do. And oftentimes we forget our humble origins. Let's talk about the past for a bit, shall we? Tell me about yourself. Perhaps about your childhood. My childhood? I never really had a childhood. The ghosts of my past and my birth have always restrained me, Keshava. My destiny has always failed me. Or maybe you failed your destiny. I don't understand. How could I fail my destiny? I never went back on my word. And yet fate has always been cruel to me. However, what can a man do when his destiny is predetermined? Hmm? I have lived my entire life following my dharma. <laughs> you speak of dharma. Where was your dharma, Angaraj, when Draupadi was bereft of her honor in front of the whole court? You are the creator of your own life. Our destiny is in our own hands, Angaraj. If you don't like your destiny, you have the power to change it in the way you want it to be. What could I have done? I was not the king of Hastinapur, nor a minister, neither was I a crown prince, nor was a man. Sometimes, sometimes we don't have a choice, Madhava. We always have a choice, Karna. You had a choice to oppose Duryodhan when he tried to bereft Draupadi's honor in front of the whole court. You had a choice to not surrender your soul to Duryodhan. Why shouldn't I, Madhava? You had a choice to abandon all of this. But you chose to participate in this war out of your vengeful desire to prove your mettle to the Pandas. Why shouldn't I? How is it my fault that I am born in a family of a charioter and not a Kshatriya? How is it my fault that I have always been denigrated for my caste? How is it my fault that I was denied to become a warrior even when I am equally worthy? Do you think that becoming a warrior is the only way to prove your worth? Think about it. Why do you crave to become a warrior? Is it by choice? Or is it by coercion? Coercion? No one had forced me to become a warrior, Madhava. <laughs> no one. But you. Your envy has forced you to become a warrior, Angaraj. You desire to undermine all the Kshatriyas for the injustice that was done to you since birth. If you think that accomplishing this ambition would free you from your social burden, then you are deluded, my friend. That doesn't make you a free man. If anything, it makes you a slave. A slave? How am I a slave? Not just you alone. But all of us are slaves to something in our life. Some of us are slaves to our family, some to our love, some to our principles, some to our power, to wealth, to glory. And some of us are slaves to our ambition. When we are born, mother, we are all just like the water, limpid, pristine and unbiased. We merely reflect what's inflicted upon us. 
we are slaves to our desires because of our own circumstances madam no one can change where i was born so be it as a slave or as a free man or no matter how great i become i would always be called a suta putra in that case i should always be remembered as ranchod das huh? <laughs> although i would be delighted if people remembered me by what i represented because i believe that the real courage lies not in fighting the war but in preventing it the point is you at least had a prerogative of fighting in the war because you were born a kshatriya or devaki nandan kshatriya <laughs> whereas i am a suta putra i didn't have that fortune and what if i told you that you are not a suta putra how is that possible my father is a sarathi mother you know it and what about your biological parents have you ever wondered about the origin of your formidable kavach have you ever wondered about the origin of your massive strength vigor and radiance my mother will always be radha ma she accepted me as her son when my real parents abandoned me they disowned me krishna like 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 i was a curse as if i was nothing i was raised by radha ma and she is my only mother it doesn't matter to me anymore who my real parents are i am and always will be radhe what if i told you that your biological mother is none other and the former queen of hastinapur no and the mother of pandavas kunti no this is not true what if i told you that the fate that you have been accidentally subjected to is not the truth you were trying to play with my mind before the war i, I thought you were my friend and had the best interests at your heart Why would you play such a ridiculous trick mother? It is the truth Karna. Your mother Kunti had a blessing in the form of an incantation from sage Durvas. A powerful incantation which could give her a son from a god that she worshiped. But young lady Kunti was naive. Just to test the power of that incantation, she prayed to the sun god Surya. To her surprise, the sun god presented her the blessing of a son. That son was you, Karna. You are the first born of Kunti. You are a Kunteya. You are a Pandav, the eldest of them all. You have never been the Angaraj Karna or the Suta Putra Karna. You never were. You are the Surya Putra Karna. You are the son of the sun. You are the blessing of Surya Narayan himself. No, that that can't be true. You are lying, Keshava. You must be. You just want me to join hands with the Pandavas, don't you? You are trying to disorient me from my path. Why are you telling me all of this and that too now? I have. So so many questions and i could give you all those answers but it doesn't matter anymore karna what's done is done no one can change the past dwelling on the past does not make a difference learning from the past to create your future that is what matters are, are you saying that i can It doesn't matter if you can. It matters if you will. As I said, all of us have a choice, Surya Putra, just as you do now. The choice that you make today will determine the fate of thousands of people who will die on Kurukshetra. The choice rests in your hands. 
Oh, benevolent Mahadev. I don't know what to do anymore. You can fight alongside your brothers on the side of dharma. Or you can fight alongside Duryodhan. But know this, that if you choose to fight alongside Duryodhan, you are nothing more than a victim of a man who thinks he's right. But then what about my word to Duryodhan? How should I renege on my word? Ask yourself, is your word worth a woman's honor? Is your word worth the lives of thousands of other men who are going to be butchered on the battlefield by your arrows? Is your word worth the life of all those women who would soon become widows? Is your word worth the life of all those children who would soon be orphaned? There once lived a great man. He was known as the Eka Vachini, Eka Bani, Eka Patni. A man whose absolute virtue was the truth. Yet he chose to digress from his path of morality when he killed Wali from behind the bushes. Do you know why? Because he knew what dharma meant. Dharma is knowing the difference between ego and virtue. Dharma is knowing the difference between what is right and what is easy. Because most of the times, the right path isn't always the easiest one. Forgive me, Madhava, but I cannot go back on my word and betray Duryodhan. He was the one who gave me an identity when everyone else shunned me for my birth. Our identity is not defined by our birth, but by our actions and the choices that we make. It is not defined by who we are, but it is defined by what we did. I know you had a life of injustice. I know the pain that you had to suffer at the hands of an orthodox society. I know that it must have been hard for you as a child. It shouldn't have been you, Karna. It shouldn't have been you. But it is what it is. Your past determines where you come from, but the choice that you make today will determine where you stand. And what if I choose to be on the side of Duryodhan? How would the people remember me then? You can conquer the world, but the people will forget. You can change the world and the people will forget. You can save the world and they will forget. You can destroy the world and the people will still forget. But for every step that you take in it, you will leave a mark. For every seed that you plant, you will leave a mark. For every choice that you make, you will leave a mark. You might be forgotten by people, but your choices will always live on. The earth will remember your actions for it breathes, it feels, it grows. It remembers everything and everyone. So for what you choose today, you shall be remembered tomorrow. Choose wisely, my friend. Choose wisely. Then I choose to live by my word. I will stand on the side of a dharma only to show the strength of dharma. I don't know how I would die on the sanguinary sands of Kurukshetra, but I will fight to become an example for every child who was subjected to the life that he was born in. I will become a symbol of what happens when you choose the wrong side. Let my life be as chaotic as it might have been, but a medium of letting people know the difference between what is good and what is right. I choose Duryodhan only to let people know the consequences of choosing other. So here I stand, Madhava, as humble and as vulnerable as I can be, forced to choose the Adharma only for the greater good. <laughs> your life was loud and chaotic but I promise you that your death will bring you peace the next time we meet shall be on the battlefield of Kurukshetra go ahead Angaraj 
I promise you that people will always remember you as the greatest and noblest warrior that Bharatvarsh has ever seen. Tathast